Hey everybody, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all of you. As you can see, I'm back in my office. I'm taking a little bit of time off uh, this Christmas break. The next uh, next week, I probably won't have a video um, as I'll be away, but I'll get to that in just a second. So I just wanted to do this quick video first to, again, wish you all a Merry Christmas. I hope it's been very blessed and very restful and very joyous for all of you. Uh, it was for me. I got really excited. I got this bad boy for my smartphone. It's a three axis gimbal. I'll be able to use this and hopefully get some better, smoother footage uh, for all the pilgrimages that I'll be doing in 2019. Which leads me to the next thing. Uh, even though, yes, I am taking a break, I probably won't have a video next week. Do not be afraid. I will be coming back bigger and better for 2019. I'm really excited for what this channel is going to be doing and evolving over 2019. Um, the very first video I can tease right now is I'm going up to the Sikh conference in Indianapolis. But while I'm up there, I'll probably take a day and go to a site that I've never been to, a pilgrimage uh, site that I've never been to. I'm very excited about it, but I'll just leave that as a tease. Before I get into the main part of this video, I just just wanted to take a quick second to thank everyone this year for even watching two seconds of my videos. I greatly appreciate it. It's a labor of love. I hope you all have enjoyed uh, some of the videos that I've put out. And for the 10 subscribers that have just subscribed to this channel that said, hey, this crazy guy looks kind of interesting. I kind of like what he's doing and want to follow him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I greatly appreciate it. Uh, I hope many more join us in 2019, but for the 10, I do not forget y'all. You are in my daily prayers, and you're also in every prayer intention when I go to a pilgrimage site. So if you wanna be a part of that prayer list, uh, get subscribed, start following, leave comments down below. Please let me know if there are any prayer intentions that I can personally take with me when I do go on pilgrimage. So there's much, much more coming in 2019. As I said, I'm very excited excited uh, to get started but before I do again just taking a little respite with the family but I wanted to put out this I guess you can say bonus footage I did an interview with Randall aka Pilgrim for Less and again I'll leave the link down below or you can check out the videos uh, we made three of them uh, in this channel you can check them out right out there also speaking up of, of right up there as you can see there's a new item on our pilgrimage wall this is from when I went to the Shrine of the Blessed Sacrament, the St. Benedict Medal. I thought it was beautiful and apropos for everything that we did. So, and I, th I thought we really needed a crucifix on this wall. So anyways, this is a lengthy interview with Randall. I hope y'all enjoy. And I'll probably, the next video will be, oh, let's say the first Saturday in January. So whatever that is, the first fifth, whatever that Saturday is. Check it out. I'll see you on 2019. Thank you all so much for watching. God bless y'all. We're on our way back home and I thought this would be the perfect time to cut this part of the video of Randall here or JR. Would you prefer to go by? Uh, we were just, when you said, hey, what's the order for what we're eating? You're like, JR. Uh, I usually go by JR online because it's easier. Cool. I, my fun fact, growing up, my uncle, he, uh, we'd go fishing every weekend. Uh huh. And he had a buddy named JR. Ah. And they would always be on the radio when we were on the boat. And, uh, <laughs> he would be like, How about you, JR? <laughs> They're like, Come back, Randy. <laughs> and they used to call him U turn, JR U turn, because. Somehow he'd always get lost and he would always be doing U-turns with this big boat and his truck. Oh, really? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to cut all this out later. Yeah. Or, or will not. you? <laughs> Anyways, um, so tell the people about yourself. Well. What you want to look, what you want them to know. I... <laughs> all right. All right, sweet. Great. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> no, um. Uh, I'm a manufacturing engineer. I work with airplanes. I am Filipino and proud. I run a blog called Pilgrim for Less. I am Catholic and I have a Chihuahua. 
let's jump since this is a this channel is about pilgrimages. Yes. How many pilgrimages ballpark? How many have you been on Total. in your life that you can think of? I may just have to name them. So March July twenty thirteen. World Youth Day 2013, March for Life 2014, uh, World Youth Day 2016, and uh, Walk for Life 2017. No, with the, the Walk for Life, what was that? Where was that at? That was in San Francisco. Okay. Because I couldn't go to the march in Washington, D.C., so I figured gotcha. I'll just go to the West Coast one. I did that one on my own went by myself and then I don't know I've I haven't been counting but I've done a whole lot of like smaller pilgrimages on my own a handful in Japan and a handful here in the US but the major ones were just the ones I mentioned right well I mean to me a pilgrimage is a pilgrimage whether you do it by yourself in a small sure. thing like like what were you and I are doing right right or the bigger ones like you talked about right right um a lot of them were solo travel too so uh you know i didn't really go through a company or a touring thing it was like it was not like a pre-packaged deal it was just me on my own so what was the let's start with like the negative so what were some of the disadvantages of doing that sorry <laughs> excuse me <laughs> so the disadvantages of uh doing it on my own uh, I didn't have a set itinerary and I didn't have the connections to places so I couldn't get like a more in-depth or personal tour of yeah. places it's really it was just really me visiting these places and praying or sightseeing on my own right. you know because like if you do prepackaged stuff you know sometimes that includes like oh a personal tour of the Vatican that right. you know most everyone don't doesn't have access to or or whatever. Or, and also they kind of know, I mean, I've had that happen to me where there's been times when they're like, oh, did you get a ticket for oh, that? Right. And you're like, what? I, I was supposed to get a ticket and you didn't know. Right. Whereas the companies that do it all the time know, hey, here's who you have to call, this is how much it is, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, uh, when me and a uh, travel buddy of mine from my parish, when we went to Mother Teresa's canonization, we didn't have tickets to the canonization <laughs> and so we were gonna like kind of beg the Swiss guard for some tickets <laughs> but fortunately at Rome's airport um, we kind of struck up some conversation with a Filipino lady <laughs> like you do like you do because me and my friend was he's Filipino too oh, okay. and uh, and yeah we were just talking about yeah we're going to the canonization it just so happened she had like a handful of extra tickets so she gave us some but yeah the yeah if you're striking out on your own like it's the ticket situation can be kind of a right kind of a swing or a miss so what were some of the advantages or the good parts of doing it on your own um i kind of mentioned that not having an itinerary a set itinerary was a disadvantage but i think it also can be an advantage oh for sure because Inevitably, as I'm sure you agree, Jason, that pilgrimages, you know, you can have a set idea of what you want to do, but things fall apart pretty easily, right? <laughs> or can fall apart pretty easily, right? Um, and so, if you kind of design your own itinerary, like it's, I don't know, you don't feel as bad not seeing everything, you don't feel like you're missing out as much, right? If you're uh, kind of, I don't know, uh, playing it by ear or flying by the seat of your pants basically right well i think there's two parts to that one is what type of person are you like if you're a type a person not mm -hmm. having a schedule you're not gonna like that oh no 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 you know, type b people yeah it's great um but the second thing was and i can't remember if i've talked about this in a previous episode about like going with a tour group and i, I think the problem one of the problems with a tour company or a pilgrimage company mm -hmm. is the not the pilgrimage people themselves to an extent, but also the clientele that they're trying to pull from. Oh, right. Because right. we, my wife and I have had that happen where we went to Rome the first time through a pilgrimage company. 
and the expectation. So for example was, oh, well tonight we're supposed to, on the schedule it said we're supposed to have a lasagna and traditional Italian meal. Well, the, the planes fell through and the restaurant was closed. They didn't expect it to be closed and we had to go find another restaurant and they served more simple food. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Which Becky and I, being on pictures before, we were like, yeah, we're just gonna roll with it. And it turned out, we loved it. Um, it ended up being like, what, gnocchi or It was gnocchi, we never had it before. Oh, nice. It was awesome. Uh, it was mm. red sauce and Ooh. Parmigiano cheese. But the other cool thing was we, we, we got to go there, we went to the bar, and they had all these Italian beers, and I never didn't, didn't know how to pronounce half of them. Peroni. And we were yeah. like, yeah, besides that one. <laughs> and I was asking, like, can I get a little taste test of it? You know, here in the States, if you get a taste test, I mean, it's usually like three ounces to taste it. There, they'll give you a whole freaking pint <laughs> to, to taste drink, it? to taste what? it, to okay. then buy it okay. later. I'm like, wow. And he gave me like four of these. You had a flight. I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but that would have never happened if we weren't open and ch charitable and just kind of going with the flow, if you will. So, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. So, tell us a little bit about Pilgrim for Less. Tell mm. us a little bit. So, you know, I, I know I mentioned it earlier. Uh, I don't know if it'll be in this video or the, the one before, um, but you know, what inspired you to start your blog, to write, to talk about Pilgrim for Less? What does it mean? What's the message and the vision? Okay, uh, so I had my own personal blog a while back, and when I started traveling to Japan a lot for work, um, my personal blog kind of ended up being more travel centric <laughs> and more uh yeah more travel centric and um yeah so I, a part of me kind of wanted to separate all the travel stuff from the regular stuff i was blogging about yeah um and then also when i was traveling to japan uh, a lot on not every trip but most trips i would have a weekend to like go out and explore on my own and sometimes that even involve like going to see a Catholic church in a different city or just simply going to mass in Japan and then all this mixed in with like the big stuff so like we have still going to March for Life still I mean I was <laughs> what was crazy about 2016 is that you know we went to we did the World Youth Day Poland trip yeah. and between two Japan trips for me so <laughs> uh, that was insane um, <laughs> But, uh, when I, okay, so at the end of World Youth Day 2016, I had the crazy idea of attempting to go to Mother Teresa's canonization, and I made it work. And I, the reason why I made it work is, uh, well, I had some vacation time left over, thankfully. But then, uh, because of all of my flying to Japan, I was able to use miles in order to go to Rome. And because of all my hotel stays in Japan, I was able to spend those points for a hotel stay. For Mother Teresa's canonization. And so I had it in the back of my mind that, oh wait, I can use miles and points to go to Rome if I wanted to for events like canonizations or if I wanted to do pilgrimages. Yeah. And so that idea kind of stuck in the back of my mind. And so after, after a while, I just kind of thought that maybe this could be applied to something else. And uh, I started reading a lot of travel blogs just because I was frequently traveling. And I learned about travel hacking and using credit cards to leverage, earning a lot of points to re redeem uh, on airlines and hotels to go to cool places in style. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, most travel blogs, you know, cover the whole, yeah, earn 100,000 points and just spend it on first class, you know, sort of thing. Right. All of them do that. Uh, but then, like, I realized that, wait, this sort of concept can be applied towards going on pilgrimages. I haven't done a really good job of, <laughs> of uh, bridging the gap, but um, I guess... What do you mean, bridging the gap? Bridging like, uh, living that out a lot. Uh, living out the, let me use miles and points that I've earned towards going on a pilgrimage, other than the gotcha. Mother Teresa's canonization. Gotcha. Any other crazy trips I've had, especially across the Pacific, was more like, let me just fly 
to earn miles <laughs> or maintain status. But oh, let me also go check out the cathedral in Hong Kong or right. the cathedral in Singapore. Gotcha. No, like, it, not the primary purpose of the trip was not pilgrimage. It was more like gotcha. a side trip. Gotcha. Yeah, <laughs> a yeah, side yeah. pilgrimage, a side right. quest, if you will. Right. <laughs> and so, I don't know, these thoughts are kind of coming together. And then um, I also started getting questions from friends and family about, I see that you're going on pilgrimages. Like, I want to go on more pilgrimages too. How? And I'm like, uh, uh, mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't have a good explanation for you. I yeah. just am lucky to be able to travel a lot. And me being the Catholic nerd that I am, like, I personally just want to go out and experience the church wherever I'm traveling to. And so, yeah. And so... With these kind of pieces in place, I kind of like thought of maybe I should start like a travel blog or a pilgrimage blog that kind of addresses or like focuses on these things. I sent out a survey about a year ago asking some questions about like why don't you go on more pilgrimages or what's preventing you and then just high level results where I don't have enough time and I don't have enough money. Yeah. And so that's why I decided to call my blog Pilgrim for Less because, you know, you can go on pilgrimages for less time and less money. A lot of people have the idea that pilgrimage, pilgrimages necessarily have to cost thousands of dollars and take up one to two weeks of your time. And, you know, it's like the Holy Land and the Camino or, you know, elsewhere in Italy and Europe. But um, I don't see anywhere in any definition of pilgrimage where that's required, <laughs> especially for us Christians. And so, uh, yeah, I, I've been pursuing, you know, low cost pilgrimages like this one we're on right now. Uh, and uh, it's possible to go to pilgrimages on your, in your own backyard. You don't have to spend a whole week. I mean, this, this pilgrimage we're on to, when we went to go see uh, St. John Vianney's heart, like this is just a weekend pilgrimage. It's, it's, costing us maybe less than 200 well let's break it down right so yeah. i got the so we we decided we split the the expenses sure yeah right so i i'm taking care of the rental car and uh, all together uh, now obviously cost is relative right because it's going to change Ooh, really dark in there yeah there i am um so cost will fluctuate for wherever you're at and everything. We understand that. But to give you some perspective, we're coming from Dallas, Fort Worth in Texas, and I got the rental car, and all together it was about 140. Picked it up Friday morning, and I'm gonna return it Monday morning, because they're closed today, so I can't return it today. Thanks. You're taking care of gas. And that's, uh... It's been 22.50. And then, <laughs> almost. It's like three or four times one way between DFW and yeah. Yeah, it was like three. Right now, at the time of this recording, it was twenty, basically twenty-two dollars. Yeah. And we're also driving. The rental car was just a Kia, Soul Kia. It's just a little compact car, so it gets good gas mileage. Hence why we're also driving. And we knew we can get a small car that gets good gas mileage. Um, things to think about. Um, but I. We knew... did. We didn't get the Camaro. It has worse. Uh... It would have gone us faster, but it's uh, a little I would, less. I would have gotten pulled over and got. Some <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, you're looking at roughly, let's just round up, say seventy dollars one way gas. Yeah. So like a hundred. So hundred forty. Yeah. So that's e that just pretty much equal right there. So that's two hundred eighty. Mm -hmm. uh, lodging. So lodging cost me. Mm, I think it was like thirty thousand points to stay at a Hampton Inn. Okay. In Atlanta. Right, because you no, have a membership. Right. Oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Hilton guy. Uh, but that was zero money out of pocket. So So if, you, you know, if you're watching this and you use uh, Hotels.com or Hilton or Marriott points or, you know, if you... And if you don't, like, if you're not a part of those type of things, start. Like, just sign up. It's free. And just you can earn points slow and steady, and that's no right. big deal. Right. Um... So yeah, his was free for that. So he got, he comped us that room. We decided I could have used some of my free nights, um, but I decided not to because I found the St. Bernard Abbey, which is a lot cooler um, <laughs> than a regular hotel room. Yeah. So, and that was just a suggested donation. 
Um, forty you know, forty dollars a night per person. As a, a suggested donation, um, fifty if you stay in the retreat house mm -hmm. there. Again, but it's a it's a donation. Whatever you can afford, and also depending on how hard are you using it. Mm -hmm. Now, also, are you eating with the monks? Are you eating with them? That you that know plays into it. Too. Plays in account of your donation. But again, it's a donation, and it's only forty fifty dollars as compared to a hundred or more if you stay right. in a hotel. Right. Um, and then and food, which basically has been ten dollars per meal. I I've been budgeting, and mm -hmm. we've been gone since Friday, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so 30, 60, 90, so that's 100, so another 200, so all together, let's just round up, I'm just gonna round everything up, we'll say max for the two of us was $400, or basically $200 per, per person, and that's, that, yes, we did some bare bones in some areas, but in a lot of areas, we could have gone even cheaper, like if we would have brought our own food, yeah. we, we, we could have saved eat costs there. Oh yeah, totally. Um, you know, there's just a, there's certain ways you can try and cut corners and try to save a little bit more. But if you told someone, hey, you're gonna go halfway across the country from Texas to Atlanta and back, and you're only gonna have to spend two hundred dollars for the weekend, that's pretty good. That's not bad for everything, and you're covering everything. Yep. yep. Um, now again, imagine if you lived in Georgia. Or Alabama or South Carolina like it's even a lot cheaper oh yeah to go to the place we went to yeah. yeah yeah so and I love what you have Randall as far as and I've talked about this I think in the very first video I did of and it, you just touched on it of just going in your own backyard mm. and also mm -hmm. just going for a day mm -hmm. like you know, pilgrimage is the, the in the catechism is like a journey to a place of prayer a shrine of mm -hmm. some kind and usually out of some sort of religious devotion or you have a specific intent exactly and it but nowhere in there does it say it has to be no. five days and it has to cost this much money and you have to travel this far right. that's what i love about what you and i are trying to help promote <laughs> in the world yeah. of saying no you can do it right in your own backyard yep yep and i have <laughs> <laughs> so i guess to kind of wrap things up um, the the last question that I have for you is maybe like, what is maybe not your well? If you have a favorite pilgrimage, that's great. And, but I guess maybe like your most memorable pilgrimage. Because sometimes those aren't the same. Oh uh, yeah, my most memorable pilgrimage. Or favorite. I'll let you choose. <laughs> Whatever you decide. Uh, I, I'll touch on two. Okay. So, I really liked when we did the World Youth Day 2016 pilgrimage in Poland with 200 other people from our diocese that was actually kind of insane uh, and we but we did a lot in the two weeks that we had it I mean yeah, it was did. like Rome for a week Czech Republic for like a weekend and then we were in Poland for um, for the remainder yeah. of the trip uh, what made it memorable was just experiencing all that with everyone but then also getting to see all these different places related to the faith um, like in Rome we hit up the four major basilicas Assisi and uh, was there anything else I think that was pretty much it oh and uh, we had mass with our bishop at the chair of st. Peter altar in the back of the st. Peter's Basilica that's pretty rare yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's really cool and um, and then a, a tour of the Vatican museums as well and I don't know. I'm a, I, I'm a nerd, so that was like awesome to to be able to see all that. And then Poland was really great too. Like to visit the Divine Mercy Shrine, JP2, uh, where he grew up in uh, Wadowice, and Wadowice. Wadowice. And then like, walking around Krakow, like that was amazing. Um, yeah. So that was great, uh, and a lot of historical things too, just throughout it all, and. Um, of course, you know, I kind of mentioned that not every pilgrimage, like, ends up going, <laughs> ends up being, like, the perfectly executed itinerary you want it to be. I mean, we missed out on the closing mass and the vigil because of safety concerns and lack of room, really. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, that's fine. 
Uh, I'll have to share that story some other day. Yeah, or yeah, some that's other episode. yes. Yeah. I don't know. I've been wanting to blog about it as well. Um, but you know, like, it's that whole idea of expectation. I mean, pilgrimage. Like, they're not always going to go perfectly. But anyway. So World Youth Day 2016, really great, really memorable, because we hit up a lot in two weeks. Although, <laughs> it would have been nice to kind of slow down and enjoy some things a little more, but I realized, because it was a pre-packaged thing, like, it was just go, go, go. But, um, that's fine. So, well, my other mem favorite memorable pilgrimage uh, was last year, when I was six months in Japan, when I was living in Japan for six months for work. Um, I took a pilgrimage down to Nagasaki for, uh, what was it? I think Golden Week holiday. So in Japan, they have a, a long week long holiday. It's actually a string of different holidays, but mm. they collectively call it Golden Week. It's in, it's like the last week of April or beginning week of May. Um, but since I didn't have any work then, I was like, oh, let me go somewhere else in Japan. So I decided to go to Nagasaki. Nice. I flew down and then I took a train because it was like five hours away. I mean, I was like in the central part of Japan and Nagasaki's on the far s southwest side of the, the country. Right. So, uh, I, yeah, I wanted to go visit the the site of St. Paul Miki and his companions where they got martyred. They were all crucified uh, on a hill. So I wanted to go visit that. So just... Uh, uh, while in Nagasaki, I got to visit that, go to the museums to kind of learn about Christian history in Japan, and that was really neat. And uh, I also got to go to the Atomic Bomb Museum there in Nagasaki, kind of learn the World War II related history uh, as well. But like, I was all on my own, so I was at my le at my le leisure leisure, <laughs> and. Uh, and uh, yeah, I took care of lodging just out of my own pocket because uh, I actually stayed in one of those like pod capsule hotels that scare a lot of people because of um, just the idea of sleeping in a coffin basically <laughs> <laughs> kind of <laughs> unnerves a lot of people. Uh, but the capsule hotels is a cheap way to uh, stay in Japan. Right. That's what I did. And um, I mean, I think I hit up McDonald's for breakfast because that's like the only thing open in the morning. And, uh, you know, I kept it cheap, and uh, yeah. you know, uh, I wasn't having Kobe steak all the time. So, uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think all, overall for that trip, I think I spent maybe like four hundred dollars or less. Okay. But that included airfare and train fare, and right. a little bit of lodging. And I messed up on the lodging. I actually. Um, booked more days than what I was actually planning on staying. Oh. So I wasted like 50 bucks, oh. but alas. But yeah, I really liked that because it was uh, that Nagasaki pilgrimage because number one, I'm a Catholic nerd, so it was really cool to learn about Catholic history in Japan. Number two, it was cool to learn about Japanese history and just encountering their culture in a different way, especially tied with Christianity because you don't normally do that in Japan. Yeah. And then third, um, just visiting like sites of historical significance, both secular and religious. That was pretty cool too. Absolutely. Well, guys, I'll leave JR's slash Randall. <laughs> I just call him Randall. That's how I've known him my whole life. Me uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave his blog website down below. Please go check it out. Uh, Greatly appreciate. And sign up for my email list. <laughs> there you go. So you know whenever he puts out new posts. Um, and uh, yeah, we're still about six hours away from home. And uh, who knows how many videos we'll film right after this? <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. But uh, if this is the last one, thank y'all so much for watching. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that good stuff, and I will see y'all in the next one.